School, the Virgin Islands' largest secondary school, is poised to deliver service with excellence as they provide a sound educational experience for the territory students. With the guidance and support of the Ministry of Education and Culture, the faculty, parents, and the wider community, the school aims to be as transparent as possible as it shares its goals and aspirations for yet another school year. Joining me today to discuss such is the newly appointed acting principal of the Elmer Stout High School, Mrs. Sandy Underhill. Mrs. Underhill, welcome and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Now, Ms. Underhill, it's been approximately eight weeks now since you've assumed this new position as the principal of the Elmer Stout High School. How has it been? It has been very challenging, uh, but not a challenge that I, am I am, have been afraid of or afraid to tackle. I would like to say that uh, with the help and assistance and collaboration of my staff, my administration, we have been able to make some positive strides at the Elmo Stout High School. And uh, it, we still have a lot, so much work to be done. And my appeal today is to the public, to parents and the public, the wider community, to appeal to them and let them know how much we need them how much the school success depends on every stakeholder's input and support as we move forward in trying to change uh, or transform Elmo Stout High School. So the first eight weeks has been challenging, but we have made some positive strides and I'm very proud of. Well, I'd like to hear more about that, both your challenges and the positive strides that have occurred since taking office. Let's start with the challenges. What areas have been most challenging thus far? I would have to say discipline. And when we speak of discipline, we need to understand the big picture of discipline. Um, we can't have academic performance or success, so to speak, without discipline, meaning a well-structured environment where teachers, as well as staff, clearly understand the expectations, clearly understand on a daily basis what is required of them, and um, basically enforcing, making sure that there are clear rules, clear expectations, and that you're not just saying them, that you're actually enforcing those rules. Um, that, I would say, is our major challenge, having systems, procedures, routines in place that promote structure in an environment as, as large as the Elmo Stout High School. While we do have the student handbook and a, a student code of, of conduct, what I found uh, that has been a main challenge is that it's not being enforced consistently. And so that's something that we are working to, to, to fix right now, just making sure that there are clear expectations, students understand what is expected of them, and that, um, that, that they, they understand the consequences that go with breaking the school rules and the violations of the, stu the student handbook code of conduct. Okay, that's one of your major challenges. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, just in general staff morale, I found that um, even as an assistant principal before I took this position, in talking to staff, you can you know, feel a sense of where their enthusiasm had, had diminished over the years. Um, a lot of them have some really, really interesting stories to tell about how they're feeling. And so that's another one of my priorities is to involve staff in just about everything that we are trying to accomplish on the campus um, to, to make them feel a sense of empowerment so that they can take ownership of the decisions that we are making and therefore become accountable. They will want to see the thing that they were part of creating of course. Uh, be a success. Of course. So I believe that plays a vital role in, in creating the morale, the positive morale that you're looking for in getting staff to be more enthusiastic about being a staff member at the Elmo Stout High School. That's another challenge. Um, the public's perception weighs heavy on my heart. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Because the Elmo Stout High School is everybody's school. I'm sure that if you were to speak to 
a hundred BVI Islanders, at least 90 of them have attended what was the BVI High School, now the Elmo Stout High School. While the school has, has lost, um, I wouldn't say credibility, it's, it's mostly behavior, discipline issues, and so that has created a negative perception, rightfully so. Uh, one of the things that weighs heavy on my heart is how we have given up as a community on the Elmo Stout High School. We cannot, we cannot, we abs it's not an option. We cannot give up on the Elmo Stout High School because this is our school. At the end of the day, it produces our future, our next premier, our next deputy premier, doctors, lawyers, people in the financial services. Our country has to continue to run and it's not going to continue to run with the people who are running it right now. It's the people, the product of our schools and being the largest secondary institution in territory, it's going to, the most of them, the majority of them are going to come from our school. So how then as a community can we wash our hands on this institution? This institution has to be everybody's business. It is not just the government's duty and responsibility. It is every single stakeholder. We all have a vested interest we all have play a part. We, it's all of our responsibility to make sure that the Elmo Stout High School becomes or continues to be a success. And so the importance of this interview lies heavily on, you know, appealing to the public, parents, and the wider community that um, you, you can't give up. We need you. We need your support. We need you there on a daily basis. And it's not about money. It's about s resources and, and services. How can I help? What organizations are out there, like the Rotary Club, for example, and by the way, they've already reached out to us. and We're working with them and other clubs like that, organizations. What can we do to assist, to provide a service, to provide a service to this institution that can propel this institution in a positive direction? So, you know, it's everybody's job, and that is, that is my appeal today. Those are some very heavy matters you just laid out for us on principle, Anna. I hope persons will be touched and moved to help assist, and like you say, to realize that the institution is everybody's mm -hmm. baby. That is right. And we all have a part to play to make sure it's successful at the end of the day. Absolutely. You spoke to some of the challenges. We're going to speak to some of the positive things that have come out of the school. But before that, when you were speaking about the community support and parents and everyone coming on board, I remember the PTA meeting that you recently held not too long ago, yes. and I think there's now a newly established PTA Absolutely. at the high school. Talk Absolutely. to us about that. Um, that is uh, something remarkable happened on the 23rd of October. We went in um, to our first PTA for the school year, and um, our goal was to not have it end without establishing a PTA. And by the way, the school had been without a PTA for over a year. Um, we did a lot of praying that night, um, some of us silently. Again, with the remarkable works of Ms. Klein Thomas, my pastoral principal, and the entire team, we were able to establish a 14-member PTA, much more than we anticipated or we actually wanted. Uh, we started off with one or two, ended up at some point with 12, and we started calling them the 12 disciples, and then before the night was over, we had two additional people um, volunteering to be a part of the PTA. And one of the things that um, I remember about that night before people started volunteering was something that was very difficult for me because I went on the podium and I thought about it before, sharing something very personal. But sometimes in life, you know, you are put in places and you experience things and it's, it's, it's not by coincidence that you do. I don't believe that. I believe that everything that happens to us is for a reason. And while we might be vulnerable and sometimes afraid to share, there are certain things that are worth sharing. So what I did was I shared with the audience that, you know, before I took this post, I experienced fear. I had a lot of second thoughts about, am I ready? Am I capable? Is this something that I can handle? And I remembered thinking about something a, f a very, very, very close friend of mine told me even before I was even a candidate 
for, for principal. And what he said to me was, if you deny this, you are slapping God in the face. And I never forgot, never forgot that. That, that played over and over and over in my mind because, again, I believe God puts people in your lives for a reason. And he spoke to him and he spoke to me, a very close friend of mine. And I, I always remember that. So I went up to the podium and I spoke to the audience and pretty much expressed my own fear. But at the end of the day, we can't let fear drive us because if we do, we would never do anything in this world. So, you know, be becoming the principal, the acting principal was not something that was done or taken lightly. It was something that, you know, I experienced fear and I, I, I appealed to them and said, you know, I know you might be feeling a sense of fear and apprehension because of all the challenges that we are facing. But if we let that drive us, we will never get anywhere. And, and I believe that with the help of Ms. Klein Thomas, because we all know how enthusiastic she is, she did an outstanding job in, in making sure that we had established a PTA by the end of the evening. And, and now we have a PTA, and I'm very, very excited because our president, Mr. Devon Penn, a male, not that we, are, we have any issues with, with ladies or, or we're gender biased, but it's always good to have a, a strong man in leadership and we believe that that is what we're going to get from this PTA. Our president is Mr. Devon Penn and our uh, vice president is, is Ms. Elvia Maduro. And so they're coming to us with a lot of enthusiasm. We've already met with them and shared some of the ideas that we want to, to see, how we want to see the school transform. And they're ready to, to, to get off running with those plans. Brilliant, brilliant. So a very strong, solid PTA yes. is there to support the work of the school. Absolutely. You spoke about challenges. How do you see yourself addressing these challenges moving forward? Well, you know, when we talk about challenges, you know, it, it weighed heavy on my heart. And in trying to even think about what do I need to combat, to overcome? A lot of times we tend to focus on resources and finances. And yes, the school everywhere needs money, finances. But some of the issues that we are facing really doesn't require a lot of money. So I started to look at what, what can I do right now with the resources that I have available to me, and, and that is human resources. And we started to tackle the issue of discipline. We've already begun a rigorous campus monitoring initiative um, where teachers, year heads, department heads, have been mobilized to monitor the campus, and that is working. Um, we still have a lot of work to do. We still have a lot of work to do. Uh, the lunch program, for one, was an issue. I don't know if you recall, about three weeks ago, we had um, a fight which involved persons from the outside jumping over our fence and attacking one of our students. And um, so that prompted an, an immediate emergency response where we mobilize some of our key personnel to help us to monitor the lunch program. And then what we did eventually was establish a long-term schedule that involves all teachers. So for about a half an hour a day, uh, teachers have to monitor the campus, monitor the lunch program, sorry. And so that is working because what that has um, triggered is a sense of us now mingling with students interacting with students and you can see that students students are, are liking that they're 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 feeling valued and appreciated i myself go and i sit and i have i eat with them at times i talk to them find out what's on their mind what's going on and um especially the seven graders they also weighed heavily on my mind coming from the primary schools very small schools to so this large institution that probably feels to them or felt to them like a shark nest and um, that, was, that was a major concern of mine. So I would make myself available and I would tell anybody, I would tell my secretary, don't schedule me for anything between 11 and one because I want to be out there because it's so important that while we try to establish these initiatives that I am leading by example. So I am not asking my staff to do anything that I am not out there doing. I drop everything and I'm there and I think it's absolutely necessary to, to do that, to be visible. I'm always there, always visible. And with the help of my administration, Mrs. Garraway, Mr. Hodge, Ms. Klein Thomas, uh, we work well together as a team. Everybody's mobilized and it makes a difference because children are now seeing that no matter where I go, somebody's out here. 
That was very impressed when I heard about it. I was like, wow, to see the, how the principal herself and her administrative team and the teachers have all c come on board yeah. and they're joining with this fight. And I hear that it's much better now. It's I have a daughter in high school yes, as well, yes, and yes. they they they've really embraced that change. Yes. They, they appreciate that. It's absolutely necessary, you know. As you know, I don't I don't um, pretend to know it all. But I believe um, leadership is a very influential place and you have to be very careful because you can have negative influence and positive influence and I strive to be a positive influence. You, as a leader, we tend to sometimes misconstrue what that word means. A leader is not someone who necessarily is a big dog in charge. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm very humbled by this position, very humbled. I believe that um, human connection is of vital importance to make connections, students, parents, the wider community, anybody who comes into contact with me. And so there is nothing that I am going to ask my staff to do that I am myself I'm not going to be doing. It is so important because that is how you, you actually get people to, to, to move and, and do by doing yourself. You can't ask someone to do something and you're sitting back in your office like you're the big, the big person in charge and, and you're bigger than anyone. You get your hands dirty. Yes, you have to get your hands dirty and I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Excellent. Now, we'll have to wrap up this program in a few minutes and we have to have a part two because our time is slipping away okay. from us. But as it relates to addressing the challenges, we'll end on the ch addressing the challenges and the positive changes that have been coming forth based on what you would like. Um, what would your final words be? as it relates to the challenges, how you've been able to address them and moving forward as an institution? Well, like I said, we, we have a lot of initiatives that we're working on. One of the things we're working on is re-establishing or revising the student handbook. We are looking at it and we are looking at it in, um, in alignment with the Education Act and the co Student Code of Conduct to make sure it's aligned. We are looking at reprinting it and um, including a contract page. The first, the very first page of it will be a contract page where students' parents sign. They will keep the handbook at home and they'll return the signed copy. And we want to have that roll out in January. We, we would like our January to be our September, where it's like a brand new school year, a lot of new things are coming. Um, what that will do, in my mind, is hold students accountable. We want to take it a bit further. We're not just going to give the students the handbook we want to use the very first week or two when they come back in January to enforce the handbook in homeroom sessions. We will go through it with them as if we were actually teaching a subject. What things are in the handbook that students should adhere to? The, just the, the basic everyday rules. A lot of students, yes, we know the rules. We know what the, the, the differences between right and wrong. But a lot of them don't understand the consequences. What can happen if I do A? What can happen if I do B? And it has to be something that is consistent, that you are enforcing it on a, cons on a consistent basis, and that everybody is holding students accountable to the same rules and regulations. So one of the things that I believe is lacking is that while we have the handbook, it is, it's not enforced consistently. So we are looking to send those home, 1,400 copies with 1,360-something students in the school. Um, every single child gets one. They will return the contract sign page, we will put that on their file and we will hold them accountable to what they and their parents have signed to. We can't just give them the book like I said. We have to teach the expectations. Everything from the dress code to infractions of the, the school rules on, a, on a, a, a daily basis for the first two weeks of school. So the first two weeks of school in homeroom session for about 15 minutes a day, we'll be going through the handbook and we're even thinking of giving them a discipline test where they have to pass with a certain amount of accuracy. Every single child will take the test until they pass it because it's not something that goes on your academic profile, but it's the importance that this, these expectations place on your daily lives. You cannot have academic success without discipline. And so it is our job as a school to, be, to, to hold up our end of the bargain by providing the information in a way that is consistent and understand, un, understood by students. And once we've done that, then we can say, we are holding you accountable for your end of the bargain, but we have to do everything that we can um, to make sure that students are accountable. Another thing we are doing is trying to establish emergency protocols. So we have a team of, of teachers working right now to establish emergency um, systems in place for dealing with fire drills, fires, 
um, intruders on the campus, um, hurricanes, what do we do uh, when we have a tsunami? We're, we're looking to have a systematic approach and it becomes a part of our daily culture and climate at the Elmo Stout High School. So that's another thing that we're working on as well. Basically, structure, establishing systems, routines, clear expectations that students know on a daily basis what is required and what is expected and that we, we take it a step further and hold them accountable for what we say we are expecting. Well, Mrs. Anna Hill, thank you for sharing so much all these different strategies you have in place to address the issues that you have seen so far at the school year. It looks like it's going to be a great year ahead. I wish you much success and we will have a part two of this interview. We will continue learning about your plans and the future direction of the Elmer Stout High School. Thank you so much for joining and me thank today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining me on this edition of the GIS Report. My guest today was Mrs. Sandy Underhill, the acting principal of the Elmer Stout High School, and we discussed the movement that the school has embarked upon for this new school year. I invite you to join us again next time for the conclusion of this interview. To view this and other programming, please visit the Department of Information and Public Relations Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, or view our programming on the YouTube channel. Once again, I'd like to thank my guest, Mrs. Sandy Underhill, and you, the audience, for taking your time to view this program today. For the Department of Information and Public Relations and the Ministry of Education and Culture, I've been your host, Information Officer, Colleen Penn. <laughs>